lead developer of Digital Aura and CEO, if I'm not mistaken, right? Okay. Nice to meet you again. Great. Thank you. Welcome for you too to Germany and Gamescom and Cologne. So, um, today we are talking about an update. You showed us a little bit of a presentation about what, is, what, what has been improved. Yes. And um, you also showed us a bit of a dogfight. And that was one of those features you also had in the, in the early beta where people could multi multiplayer fighting against each other. Correct. So, what are the differences between the older Equinoxes and the dogfight nowadays? Well, uh, in our current dog points that we have is that we've pre-created a bunch of sheep presets based on the classes that you can find in a single pair. So, because in single pair you have uh, the ships are sorted into different classes like the recon, the combat, and the siege. Um, what we've created is that we created a, a preset for each class for each faction available. And when you are in multiplayer, they are pre-balanced to each other, so you can choose your role also in the dog fight. So you can be uh, a stealthy scout who stays in the shadows and tries to kill people, or just a bomber that goes into the middle of the fight and just kills everyone. Okay, and you also mentioned that this time it's a bit harder than in the last correct series. Um, Correct, correct. So what we are going for in Aquinox Deep Descent is that we want the game to feel more like a, a game where your skill matters and where you can improve your skills as a player. So it's not just about sitting into the best ship and just standing in the middle and just clicking a button, but rather you have to learn and improve how each weapon works, which weapon is best at which range, which ship is best for what kind of situation, uh, to move good, high, peak, etc. I've also noticed that the AI improved a lot. For example, the bot we fight it against actually were hiding and uh, moving away. And that's that's a lot of improvement there too. Indeed. Uh, we worked a lot on improving the AI so that it feels like you are playing actual against actual players. So that you can actually prepare against players. Plus, if you just want to have some fun alone, it's very, very important to have good AI so that you can feel that it's a challenge. It's not just a standing dummy, as otherwise it wouldn't be fun. Okay, very good. Um, you also mentioned you are working on better music, because well, what, what I got from the reactions from the past version that you showed, people reacted a lot like, what's with the typical Equinox music? So we are currently working on our soundtrack, so you could hear some of uh, some of it in our demo and some of uh, some of it in the trailer and so on. Uh, so we are working uh, with a really great composer, and uh, I'm sure our soundtrack will be really awesome. So it will be better than than what we had before. Yes, of course, definitely. Okay. We were in a working progress stage, so uh, we weren't focusing on the soundtrack as much. We are getting to a point with the development where it's more about polishing and getting everything into the final stage. I also saw some trailers and some videos from E3, and I also saw you also have some rendered uh, cutscenes again, where the, where the story is pushed forward. Yes. Uh, that cutscene uh, at E3 was completely in game, though. It was not being rendered. Okay, good, good. So you will have both. You will have in-game cutscenes and pre-rendered cutscenes. Yes, it's going to be a mix. But nowadays the technology is so much advanced, you wouldn't probably see the difference so much. Uh, yeah, that is true. Yeah, that's okay. Um, another thing that in the early versions a lot of players complained was um, the cockpit, the visibility, and you mentioned in the presentation that you improved the cockpit a lot. Yes, correct. So we we really pushed forward on the readability of our user interface. We pushed the actual details, the, the lighting, the colors, so that it's easier and quicker to read. And we also pushed the visibility out. We improved the lighting with the volumetrics, uh, the colors, the, the, the darkness balancing, and so on. And um, now the testing is revealing that we're in a much better stage, and the game is so much more fun now. I remember you said in the last interview last year that development is like thin ice, sometimes it can break. Yeah, that's correct. But it didn't happen. You you went forward like planned 
Or were there any sh showstoppers? Yeah, there weren't any showstoppers. Uh, sometimes it's a bit harder, you know, you have to solve problems like uh, that are unexpected, but that's normal. You know? it's, it's the fight of development, but you know, it drives you to make an awesome game. That is what you also said. Um, now you are the least enjoying part of bug fixing, bug hunting. Yeah, uh, bug fixing uh, part is always tedious. Okay. But it's important. Are you also following the one day patch tradition of other publishers, other games? I mean zero day patch. No oh, zero day patch, yeah. Um, like 60 maybe. gigabytes, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I hope we won't need that, but you know, I would rather have something like that than have people who bought the game have problems and stuff. So yeah. if we need it, we will, we will have it. If we don't need it, we won't. Yeah, because um, when when the first um, was released, Fleischfahrt was it called in German. Um, you didn't have internet. Not everybody had internet. You couldn't download a lot of patches and so on. So the development nowadays can be a bit more sloppy because well, like people just update their game. Or is it like when the game is ready, it will be working even without any patches? Is that your goal? Well, obviously that's the goal of every developer. But uh, you know, if you you cannot really compare nowadays development with the old for a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. Like for example, there are so many hardware configurations. Sometimes you can test it on everyone, and sometimes for some reason one of the combinations just breaks. So we have to react. But that's why we are testing and following and trying to be as good as possible for release. Let's talk a bit about the gameplay. You also mentioned you have new fractions like Russians and Chinese. Uh, it's, it's the IPF, so in the Pacific Federation. It's a, it's a conglomeration of India, Russia and China. Uh, and we have the Atlantic Alliance, the Clans Union. These are all different factions in the game world which the player will be able to interact with in our single player campaign. Sounds a bit like Command and Conquer. Does it? <laughs> well, you also have fractions playing against each other. Yeah, well, we are in a world where uh, the fractions uh, struggle to survive because there are very little resources. We're talking about very deep in the ocean, so they kind of uh, end up with struggling and fighting each other who gets the most. But I also heard you made a statement that it's more like um, like a, a prequel, not a sequel, for the other parts. Yes, correct. So we are rebooting the franchise, uh, but we are putting the timeline closer to the the Doomsday event, the so-called Doomsday event. That's why uh, they're more like Wild West in terms of you have a lot of these small settlements and very lawless environment. So you will have your own storyline, totally detached from the old game. Correct. It is entirely detached, it plays before all the other events. But that wasn't clear in the past, so what made you this decision? This was clear from the past, it, was okay. just, it just wasn't defined how much we will involve the old lore. Okay. Now we are very clear about that. Unfortunately, I can't speak about that too much because I would spoil a lot. Okay, it's no spoilers. Hard, okay. It's very hard to speak about any story-related things without spoiling. But, but one thing you made clear is it will be darker than the big films. It will be harder for the players. It's not like button smashing, you said? Yeah, that's true. Harder is not the best expression. I would say it will, uh, more be, more skill, it will be more skill-based, player skill-based. And more rewarding because for anyone who gains uh, skill and improves, it will be much more rewarding. Because if it's just about buttons, then you don't feel the sense of improvement. You don't feel you got better. You got a better ship, and the, the ship does the job for you. We wanted to make a game where you do the job and not the ship for you. It's not Street Fighter where you just uh, press the button, smash the button, and your enemy is dead. Or if you just have enough ammo, I mean, you played it for us yourself and you said, now I have no ammo, now I'm dead. So yeah. you have to be very thoughtful about your resources and how to use them. Yes, exactly. Okay, so what's the next step before you release the game? What's on the Our schedule? Next steps. Uh, well, we're planning some open play weekends uh, very soon, quite soon after Gamescom. We will be also updating our uh, Kickstarter backers. 
uh, with some single player content, some multiplayer content, some extra ships to play with, to just explore uh, the game world of Hackbot to get a sense and obviously to get feedback so that we make sure the game is good as possible for the release. We're, we really like to work with our Kickstarter backers and we also like these open events because it gives us a lot of insight. We've already improved the balance of the game so much from our previous these events and we have a few of these events lined up in the next few months until the release. That was my next question. What did you learn from the open multiplayer beta? Uh, that well, you had for your Kickstarters? The number one thing to learn is that the game was uh, a bit slow paced compared to what we wanted to go. Uh, uh, a lot of players who play the old games also said this, that it's, it could be a bit uh, quicker, but not in the sense of movement, but rather in the sense of combat. More hectic. Uh, not, not hectic, but rather uh, you would spend way too much time just trying to kill someone. So what we've improved is, is, is the balance of how the combat itself works. Uh, and now the combat is much more uh, a few shots that you need to be careful about. If you are the first to land the few shots, you win. If you are not moving out of the way, you die. It's kind of like how in, uh, in actual situations, if you get two or three torpedoes, one torpedo you can survive, two, three, well, it's going to be tricky. It depends on the ship class you're in. If you're in a big bomber, like a sea ship, you can take a bit more shots, obviously, but it's very slow, so it's harder to dodge with. Okay, see. So you have to make your plan. Correct. Okay, yeah. I, I remember that from other games, like you're playing and you're fighting all the time and firing and like, is he dead yet? And he's not dead yet. Like, when are you going to die? So this will be more balanced and it will, will be less frustrating. Okay, good. Are you still planning to release it in Q3? Uh, no, our release plan has been moved, especially because we want to make sure we debug and polish the game as much as possible for release. So we are planning on early next year. And the consoles are coming up? Uh, well, the current plans are is a simultaneous release to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, but we'll see how that goes. Okay, thank you. That were all my questions. Thank you so much for coming.